So you want to break into Amazon Data Scientist interview, but you're not sure how? Well, this is the video that you should definitely watch because what I'm going to show you is the walkthrough in terms of what the Amazon Data Scientist interview looks like and how to prepare for it. So without further ado, let's get started. There are a number of things I'm going to talk about in this video. First of all, I'm going to give you a rundown in terms of what types of data science teams are there because that's a very crucial information whenever you're preparing for data science interviews there. And then I'm going to talk about the roles themselves because there are different various data roles from BI engineering to data scientists, to applied scientists. So I'll provide some background information about those. And I'll provide some information about the total compensation and then give you a rundown in terms of the interview process itself. What does it look like in the technical phone screen? What does it look like in terms of the on-site? And what types of questions you could potentially expect in these type of rounds? And I'm going to wrap up this video by giving you action steps in terms of how do you actually prepare for Amazon Data Science interview effectively and give you the illustrations of technical and behavioral questions at the end of this video. Now, along the way, if you like what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button and leave a comment below if you have any questions. And you can also email me at dan at datainterview.com. Now, as many of you know, Amazon.com is an e-commerce and they have all these different subsidiaries like the Alexa team and there's the AWS. So there's a number of functionalities that you should expect if you are a data scientist at Amazon. Now this really matters because it really determines the type of the um, interview questions that you're going to expect and what are some of the functionalities and the responsibility that you're going to have as the data scientist at Amazon. So one of the common roles at Amazon is basically the search team. The search team really focuses on optimizing the search experience at Amazon. So when you go on Amazon.com, you have the search bar and you're, let's just say you're going to shop for um, slippers, you know, um, in that case, you know, you're going to get some search result. So the search experience team is all about optimizing the UI, the UX experience of Amazon.com along with the, um, the search result. So they might work with a number of things like experimentation, A-B testing and so forth. Now the next common team I'm going to cover is the AWS team. So you can think of AWS team as basically the business consultants of the AWS services. So the AWS, as you know, has cloud instances and storage. But they also have other functionalities like AI and data visualization tools. So as AWS data scientists, what you're going to do is you're probably going to work with external clients, brands, um, and build data science capability for them in terms of data visualization and modeling and potentially experimentation as well. The next team I'm going to cover is Alexa. Alexa, as you know, is Amazon's smart speaker device. So Alexa, you know, basically make a command saying, hey, Alexa, you know, I want to, do you want to pack a Corona or Bud Light in your shopping cart? And then if you make the yes, then it's going to be added and you will see it in amazon.com and then you just make a purchase of that. So as data scientist at Alexa, you could work on a number of things from building product metrics in terms of customer success, customer onboarding, and even experimentation as well, but also NLP algorithm, you know, just because smart devices um, are about the information retrieval system. So so those are the type of things that you could definitely work on as data scientists in the Alexa team. The last team that I want to briefly cover is the Scott team. So they focus on the inventory forecasting and optimization, which is a crucial function. It's really the backbone of how Amazon.com is able to support millions and millions of purchases, the logistics, the boxes, and the shipping and distribution of products we love to millions and millions of users. Now, one call out that I want to mention about this is that when it comes to teams in Amazon, there are a bunch of them. The four that I just mentioned doesn't necessarily capture all of the various teams in Amazon. And so when you think about what you're going to apply, first of all, think about what type of projects that you're interested in, and then try to seek out those specific teams that you want to actually apply yourself in. The next thing I want to talk about are the various data roles in Amazon. So the first role that I want to talk about is a BI engineering role. So the BI engineers, they primarily focus on stuff like ETL pipeline, data visualization and data analysis. And the minimum qualification that's required to basically apply for this role is that you have to have BS in computer science, engineering, and math. You have to have at least three years of experience and experience in building ETL pipeline and some programming language experience such as SQL, Python, and R. And then the next role that I want to cover is a data scientist role. So the data scientists focus on experimentation, you know, A-B testing, um, statistical analysis, and data visualization. And in terms of the qualification that's required for this role, you have to have BS in computer science, engineering, math, three years of experience, experience in statistical analysis, and programming languages like SQL, Python, and R. And the next role I want to cover is applied scientists. You can think of applied scientists as basically Amazon's machine learning engineering role. 
And so as a machine learning engineer, you want to understand stuff like um, A-B testing, you want to develop ML models, you want to be able to build scalable systems in order to support hundreds of millions of users. And the qualifications for this role is, is a bit higher than the qualifications for the BI engineering and the data, en data scientist roles. And so the qualifications are that you need MS or PhD in computer science, engineering and math, four years of experience, some experience in ML and system design, and you have to have um, understanding of programming languages like SQL, Python, and R. And probably the most prized role in Amazon that probably pays the most, especially if you have a lot of experience in ML theory and research and those sort of things, is the Amazon scientist role. So you can kind of think about them as like the AI researchers. They really focus on the state-of-the-art systems in Amazon. So what they do is they develop uh, the latest techniques and models, they conduct AI research, and they'll find some implementation in various uh, functions like, you know, if you're if they're focused on supply chain and optimization, then they might um, think about how they could use um, deep learning as a way to handle those sort of optimization process. Um, and so the qualifications for this role is that you have to have MS PhD or PhD in computer science, engineering, and math, four years of experience, some experience in ML research, and programming language knowledge like SQL, Python, and so forth. So one caveat that I want to call out is that the qualifications can vary from job post to another job post, depending on a number of factors like the specific teams and what are some of the qualifications that the hiring manager might be looking for, and the levels have a direct impact in terms of what are the qualifications that are required. So you can use this information as a starting point, but make sure you do additional research in terms of the type of roles that you're interested in. So the next thing I want to cover is the total compensation at Amazon. And this is based on specifically the data scientist role. And during the remainder of the video, in terms of the interview process, um, the, what I'm going to focus on is specifically the data scientist role. But the, some of the techniques that I'll cover, you know, especially toward the end, can apply for various other roles in Amazon. In terms of total compensation, there are three levels that I want to cover. So the, there's the L4, which is basically their um, entry level position. Um, keep in mind that you know um, if you look at other fan companies like Google and Meta, um, they have different levels. So for instance, the entry level position in Google is L3. Um, same thing for Facebook as well. But for Amazon, the mapping is L4, which is equivalent to those L3 positions in other companies. Um, and then the, you have the L5, which is, you know, if you have maybe like two, three years of uh, data scientists or technical experience, um, then this is what you would be placed on, but it's not a senior just yet. So the senior position in Amazon is basically the, their L5. So as you might have suspect, your, your compensation will increase as you go from L4 to L5 to L6. Um, and so what, in terms of the dollar figure that you'd be making in, the, in terms of total compensation is the following. And keep in mind that this information is something that I've extracted from levels.fii. And although it gives you a pretty good idea in terms of what the total compensations are and what the breakdown is in terms of your, the base salary, the equity, and the bonus, um, there could be some sort of uncertainty around the exact figure itself, which is something that I'm gonna talk about in a bit. So starting with the alpha position, the total compensation that you should expect is 182K. Um, and this will break down into the following manner. So the base is going to be 135K, which is basically the bulk of the TC in this case, followed by the um, $26,000 of um, stock that you'd be getting on, on an annual basis. And then you have the bonus, which is um, 20k. For the next level up, the total compensation that you'd be making is 270k, and this will break down into 161k for base, 81k for stock, and 28k for bonus. And lastly, the L6 position, the um, based on what L level style FY is saying, is that the base is 153k, um, the stock is 159k, and the bonus is 12k. So it does make sense that, you know, obviously the, um, the stock here is going to be much larger, but in terms of the base, I'm sure it's a little bit higher. Um, you know, levels.fi, I think the way they collect the data is basically they get it from users and then they aggregate it and then they'll take the average or the median of it and to show that in the pay scale. Um, and obviously there's some uncertainty around the precision of their estimation. Um, but nonetheless though, you know, in terms of the, at the total compensation level, this is something to be expected um, based on a um, couple connections that I know who, you know, work at Amazon. I'd say this is fairly um, accurate. So now let's talk about the interview stage of Amazon. So you apply for a role that you like, 
especially the data science position, and what are the series of stages that you're going to be enrolling? What type of technical areas are you going to be covered along with the behavioral aspect as well? So the first stage of the interview process is basically the recruiter screening. So this is where you're going to be hopping onto a call with the recruiter for 30 minutes and you provide some things about your background, your career goal, and the recruiter is going to give you a walkthrough in terms of what the interview process looks like and what the timeline looks like. And they'll follow up with the next steps in terms of setting up a technical interview with you. So the first technical interview is basically the technical phone screening. And this usually consists of 45 to 60 minutes. So there is some variability to this depending on the team, the interviewer, and the time as well. You know, um, you could apply for the same team, the same role. Um, and one year or the following year, you know, the process might be a little bit different. So definitely expect that as you're preparing for interviews. And generally speaking, there are two areas that are covered in the technical screen. So you have the technical assessment, which consists of walking through the project experience. You're going to expect some follow up questions about, you know, how did you go about solving a specific issue in a project? Um, and you'll have some breadth or even depth style questions about statistics and machine learning and maybe even coding questions as well. Um, and the coding questions can come in the form of SQL like table manipulation, but also even lead code as well. Now I do recognize that, you know, obviously it's a little bit confusing in terms of what areas you should be covering, um, especially if there are so many areas all at once. But generally what you should do is you should try to get as much information from the recruiter and ask them specifically what is to be expected for the technical interview and what isn't going to be covered. And the other area that's gonna be covered is the behavioral. Now keep in mind that not all technical phone screen will have the behavioral, it really depends. I've worked with about a dozen clients through coaching for Amazon Data Scientist interview and I can tell you that there is quite a lot of variability in terms of what the technical phone screen is based on the levels, based on the interviewer, um, and based on the team. So variability is something you should definitely expect for the technical phone screen. So the behavioral part is basically their leadership principle. You know, Amazon is notorious for their 14 core values. Um, and so you, you should expect to convey some compelling career story that demonstrates their value system. Now, if you did well for the technical phone screen, the interviewer is really impressed. What's going to happen is that they'll advance you to the on-site and the on-site are basically, you know, it, could, it might take up an entire day or it might be over the course of two days. Um, and this is 45 minutes to 60 minutes. Um, five rounds of this or even six rounds of this really depends on the factors that I mentioned and it's usually conducted by senior data scientists and managers in different domains from engineering to data science and business and the areas that are covered are basically it's more enlarged version of the technical phone screen so we're talking about you know project experience statistics machine learning and coding um, and you're definitely going to have um, a lot of these behavioral questions um, about uh, leadership principles. So that's something you should definitely expect. Now I'll give you an example of what the interview process looked like recently based on a client that I coach um, who prepared for the Alexa shopping data scientist interview. So in the first technical stage, which is the technical phone screen, the areas that were covered during her um, 60 minute interview by a senior data scientist were the following. Uh, first of all, it was a career background discussion, which took up about 20 minutes um, of the meeting itself. And so this is where she walked through the end-to-end -end process of how she went about solving a particular machine learning project. And the interviewer asked about four to five questions specifically about, you know, stuff like, oh, why did you choose this method for feature selection and why not this, you know? And so this is where you really have to know the ins and outs of everything that you did for a particular project um, that you mentioned in your resume. The second area that she was assessed on was the machine learning breadth style questions. So these are questions like, you know, what is the difference between bagging and boosting? Um, what is the k cross validation? So this is basically a very like quick pace, sort of like 30 second response that simply explaining machine learning concepts. Um, you know, a lot of these stuff are covered in the introductory to statistical learning, especially the beginning chapters. So if you are preparing for interviews, um, you know, for these ML breadth style, uh, that's a book that I definitely recommend, um, in, you know, for your preparation. And the last area that she was assessed on, you know, which took up about 15 minutes of that 60 minute interview is basically an A-B testing case study. And if you're interested in learning more about A-B tests and case study, definitely check out datanytv.com because there's the case in point course and there's, um, you know, 
uh, basically a lot of these case studies on A-B testing. There's even an A-B testing course that will walk through um, all the areas that you should definitely cover in the A-B testing um, interview questions. So after that stage, um, she advanced the on-site and the on-site consists of five rounds um, and all of these were 45 minute interviews. So the first interview was the data manipulation and this um, actually consisted of two um, types of areas that she was covered. So the first area being um, SQL question, you know, very straightforward sort of data manipulation type of questions. Um, and then she actually had to um, basically replicate the solution using um, pandas manipulation. The next area was basically statistics round and the statistics round um, were basically a series of some breadth style questions, you know, like what is p-value, what's the difference p-value versus confidence interval, you know, very straightforward type of questions, stuff that you probably would have learned in statistics 101, regression 101 courses. And then, um, you know, lastly, she was asked some, um, you know, basically uh, a case study. Uh, and once again, you know, definitely check out dating.com if you want more practice on those sort of case interviews. And the next interview was um, was actually 60 minutes. Um, and the 60 minute was basically a project experience. So it was like a deep dive. Um, the interviewer was a manager and, and he was trying to understand the business aspect and the technical aspect of how she wanna, went about solving and delivering um, projects that were listed in the resume. And the next round is the behavioral, uh, basically the leadership, leadership principles. So that's you know fairly straightforward. You know, basically memorize 14 leadership principles, which is actually something that I'm gonna mention in the description. I'll list all the individual um, leadership principle uh, you know, values that you should definitely know in preparation for interview and have stories based on your career experience that illustrates those values. So definitely look down below. And the last stage was basically the business case study. So basically there is a specific business problem that Amazon is trying to solve and you have to use a combination of some statistical analysis and machine learning as a way to solve that case problem and you should expect some follow-up questions from the interviewer. So that provides an example of what the Alexa shopping interview process can look like and once again um, definitely um, use the recruiter as a way to accurately figure out what the um, areas are in the both the technical phone screen and the on-site and prepare for those interviews accordingly. Now there are three action tips that I'd like to provide in, when you're preparing for the Amazon data scientist interview. And this actually applies for other data roles as well, whether it's a BI engineer, uh, whether it's their um, applied scientist or research scientist. So the first thing that I wanna mention is that so you have to try to gather as much information as you can about the interview. So um, I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again, definitely work with the recruiter as a way to specifically figure out what types of areas are covered in the interview and who are the interviewers. Because a lot of that information can be really helpful in terms of um, designing your personal attack strategy um, in, you know, in basically acing these interviews. So um, that's something that you should definitely do. The second thing I want to mention is that when it comes to business case problems, um, approach it like a consultant. You know, you probably read um, posts that I put out on LinkedIn um, where I talk about some breakdown in terms of how you should approach business case problems. You know, generally business case problems is sort of like, you know, you have some open-ended big problem and you have to basically demonstrate a combination of business sense and technical sense as a way to solve a problem. And one sticking point that I often notice for clients um, is that they will look at a business case problem and immediately they're gonna dive into providing the technical solution. They'll say something on the lines of, oh, okay, so this is a prediction problem. Um, I'm gonna use regression analysis, like, you know, basically ordinary least squares is what solve this problem. If you do an immediate deep dive in terms of the um, technical solution, um, then that is a big flag for interviewers because they want to understand whether you really get the business context or not. And so a couple of things that you definitely need to do upfront is that when you approach a problem like a business consultant, you wanna start with some clarifying questions and then try to establish the business parameter of like what is the main goal of this problem and what are the things that you should cover and what are the things that you shouldn't cover. And once you have the building blocks of the business details, then from there you should proceed in, in basically um, talking about what the technical solution is. You know, imagine you walk into doctor's office and you say that you have a headache and immediately the doctor, without even asking you basic questions like what's the symptom, what's your pain level, and the doctor says, you know, I think you have brain tumor, so let's give you surgery tomorrow. You know, is that a convincing um, doctor that you probably want to work with? Probably not, right? So same thing for data science 
um, interviews as well. They want to see whether if you work for um, you know Amazon, are you going to approach it as a consultant? Because that's really the nature of what data scientists do. We're consultants, um, uh, you know, except we basically use uh, you know sexy stuff like machine learning algorithm and um, programming as a way to solve um, you know this, these uh, big data problems. When, and the last tip that I want to cover is that you know you definitely want to do a lot of drills in these coding and SQL problems because there's no way around it. Um, you know when it comes to like open-ended business case problems, you know there's a degree to which it's like sound, it's not, and and some of the assessment can be a little bit subjective to an extent. But when it comes to SQL problems and coding problems, you either just get it right or you don't get it right, um, and and it's under time constraint. So what you should do is that, um, you know, let's suppose that you have your interview is coming up, you know, in a month from now on a daily basis, practice, you know, three to four of these coding and SQL problems a day and try to solve these problems in less than, you know, six to seven minutes. And applying the time constraint is important because when you are in the actual interview itself, you're going to feel that pressure, you're going to feel some nervousness. And um, you know, if it might if it might have taken you like 30 minutes to solve a problem, um, then that's probably not something that you want to do. Uh, you want to be able to solve it in much less time. So the next thing I want to cover are some case illustrations of how I would go on about personally solving some of the technical question and the behavioral question. So suppose that in the business case round, I was asked the following question, which is, how would you segment customers on Amazon.com? So what I would do is I would start by with some clarifying um, questions to basically just clarify some of the assumptions that I have about this question. So when it comes to um, segmenting customers on Amazon.com, I'm going to make some assumptions that the, really the purpose of this is to really understand customer behaviors and then um, promote some of the business um, initiatives that Amazon's trying to do. So um, whether it's for marketing, um, you know, whether it's for developing new products, um, if you're able to um, categorize customers based on their purchase patterns, um, then you can definitely do a lot of the sort of personalization that can be really helpful. So once I've established the business overview and the goal of this problem, the next thing I'm going to do is basically talk about the technical solution. When it comes to when it comes to customer segmentation, there are two pro predominant ways of segmenting users. Uh, one is the um, RFM, which is the Recency Frequency Monetary Value. It's a common technique that's used across tech companies whenever they're trying to categorize um, users. RFM stands for Recency Frequency and Monetary Value of Customer Purchases. So the recency is, you know, when was the last time a customer has purchased? Was it 100 days ago or 50 days ago? Um, frequency is how often do they purchase it, right? So um, on a monthly basis, you know, how many items do they purchase? Um, you know, is it seven items uh, per month or is it 20 items per month? And then monetary value is what is the total value that the customer has generated for Amazon? And so the idea of using RFM is that you could use basically quantiles. So you, you could take, let's just say the top 10 percentile for the re recency, frequency and monetary value um, and use this information as a way to perhaps email target um, loyal customers in the form of promotions, um, and the other functionality that you could definitely use this is, you know, if you find that there are some underdogs of customers who are low in these scales, um, then under, try to understand you know, what are the behavioral patterns um, that allows certain users um, who aren't really purchasing as much and get them to be more active on Amazon. Now, another possible technique that you could definitely propose is basically the um, clustering technique. So sort of like, um, you know, using K-means clustering, or hierarchical clustering. So this is, you know, you probably have to mention specific data signals that you're going to consider uh, from the um, profile information um, that you could potentially extract in terms of um, a person's gender, the age group, which are some signals that you could potentially collect from third-party data sources. Um, and their purchase patterns as well. So what type of items do they typically purchase? Um, and other information, sort of like the recency, frequency, and monetary value signals could also be useful as well. Um, and you would do some you know, pre-processing, cleaning, um, and future selection, and then talk about how you would actually apply the clustering algorithms and evaluate it 
um, as a way to basically propose the solution. So this at a high level kind of gives you some glimpse in terms of how we're going about approaching the segmentation exercise. And obviously if this was an actual, you know, maybe like a 20 minute, 30 minute, you know, basically case deep dive, um, then I would provide a lot more details. Um, and you should also expect a, a lot of follow up questions in the interviewer as you walk through the process. But at a high level, it should kind of give you some illustration in terms of, you know, how you should approach the problem like this. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about this type of problem, um, you should definitely check out um, the monthly subscription course just because it comes with um, a specific case example um, based on this and it gives you additional details in terms of how you actually solve this. The last demonstration I'd like to provide is the leadership principle. So this leadership principle is based on customer obsession, which is one of their 14 leadership principle values. So um, the problem is basically, you know, tell a story about a time when you work with a difficult customer. Uh, so I'll talk uh, briefly about um, one of the example problems um, I stumbled upon. Um, back when I worked as a uh, data scientist at PayPal, um, there was a situation where I worked with this large bank and I'm not gonna name it, you know, just because I don't think I can really disclose that. But basically, um, you know, client had an expectation that we should be building a fraud model um, at the transaction level. So we should be using transaction level information um, and then make a detection in terms of whether a given um, account holder is a fraudulent user or not. Um, but the, um, the team that I work for, our proposal was that they shouldn't do that, rather they should do it at the application stage because of a number of factors from, you know, one, they didn't have an ML way of blocking out whether a particular customer who just su submitted an application is a fraudulent user or not. And the technical solution that we built on was based on this first stage of the fraud problem and not necessarily using transaction data because if we're going to use transaction data, um, that requires additional set of technical considerations around like engineering, like data pipeline, those sort of things. Um, so based on what we can immediately offer, uh, we basically approach the client saying, hey, you know, like I, we understand that there's a lot of value in building a transaction level um, modeling, but um, you know, currently right now, you don't have an application um, stage um, fraud model. And we believe that you know, um, in terms of the implementation time, in terms of quick wins, um, if we focus on this stage, um, this is probably gonna give you the quickest bank of, uh, for your buck. And so um, I had the client meetings um, and basically, uh, you know, give them like, what are the pros and cons of doing one of these approach and eventually, um, you know, convince them that we should be using the application stage, not the tr transaction stage um, as a way to convince the stakeholders um, who were really resistant at first, uh, but initially, uh, but eventually, you know, they were convinced that this is the stage to go. Um, and additionally, we were able to justify this by showing, um, you know, basically some um, some MVP model, which actually came out to be uh, fairly decent. Um, and this further uh, provided justification later down the road that, um, that we made the right move. Uh, so when it comes to working with difficult customers, um, it's, it's a series of conversation. You can't really expect them to, um, to nudge in terms of the direction that you're working with. Sometimes it's a series of meetings um, and back and forth exchanges to be able to gradually convince them in your um, favor. So, uh, so that's an example of basically a um, behavioral case interview. Uh, so what I would like to suggest is that, um, you know, go through the list and think about, you know, maybe two to three examples based on your career experience that de really demonstrates these core values. So I hope you find this helpful. Um, all right, so there you have it, guys. So this is the walkthrough, all the details of how to prepare for Amazon um, data related interviews. Um, you know, so if you like this type of content, um, you know, make sure you like it, subscribe it, comment it if you have any questions and check out datingto.com. You can get coaching from me, one-on-one -on -one mock interviews, I'll personalize interviews based on the companies you're interviewing for and also check out the monthly subscription course where there are the A-B testing mock interview videos that are already recorded. Um, there are the um, other contents like the case in point uh, and product SQL questions. So definitely check these out.